Are you eager to discover the rest of my top 10 things to do in London? Then wait no more as we're getting started right now. Hi everyone, I'm Ugo Renze with Onyx Property Consultants and Keller Williams. I'm a London-based property agent and I help my clients buy, sell, and manage property here in London. It means I get to know the city pretty well and I love sharing it and love to experience the endless things it has to offer. In my prior video, I shared with you numbers 10 through 6 of my best things to do in London where we let out again. And in this video, we're going to get all the way down from number 5 to number 1 best thing. This is part of my two-part series on my top 10 best things to do in London. And if you haven't checked out part one, I'll have a link in the description below. Now, picking up where we left off is at number five. And for that, I'd say it's to go meet up for afternoon tea. Afternoon tea in London is absolutely legendary. And if you haven't done in a while, well, this will be a great time to do it. You can go full scale at places like Claridge's or the Dorchester Hotel, where me and friends had tea last year, or at the Ritz, where me and friends had tea, well, last year. There are also more casual options, such as the Hamyard Hotel, which I absolutely love, and the Sanderson Hotel has an Alice in Wonderland themed afternoon tea. For number four, my recommendation is to go discover a new area. One of the greatest things about London is that it's a really walkable city, so I always recommend that people get off the main street and discover the peace and tranquility of the side streets. So you can discover fabulous neighborhoods such as Notting Hill for Portobello Market or Camden for its edgy market and location along Regent's Canal or South Kensington, home to some of the world's most prestigious museums and cultural institutions, and not to mention it's at the edge of Hyde Park. But London has some incredible quieter areas that you would absolutely love to discover, such as Marley Bond tucked between the noise and bustle of Oxford Street and Baker Street, to Shad Thames where you step back in time to Dickens medieval London, or St. Catherine's Docks where if you're at the wharf, you'll think you're somewhere in the Mediterranean. I also love Clerkenwell for Exmouth Market, and you can discover the Columbia Road Flower Market on Sundays and discover the wonderful streets, shops, and cafes that surround this fabulous market. And number three, it's a visit to a cultural institution. Where do I even begin on this one? Well, let's start at South Bank Center where you can check out the BFI Theater for Cinema, the National Theater for Plays, or Queen Elizabeth Hall for musicals and other performances. You also have Sadler's Wells for Modern Dance, the incredible Barbican Center, which could keep you busy for the rest of the year. And don't forget places like the British Library, which hosts incredible exhibits and events that you'll definitely want to attend. So what do you think of my list so far? What are your favorite things to do around London? Make sure to leave me a comment below as I'd love to hear from you. Heading back to our list to wrap it up is at number two, it's probably one of my all time favorite things to do in London and that's visit the museums. London museums are absolutely incredible and you can learn and experience so much. My fa absolute favorite is the V&A Museum in South Kensington for its breadth and variety of exhibitions from the all time greatest Alexander McQueen exhibit a few years ago in Christian Dior last year to more recently the Cars exhibition. I remember that one of the best exhibits I saw there was on pearls and it was all about how the maid and their place in fashion society and you just really learn so much as everyday things that are around us. Beyond the V&A, there are countless other phenomenal museums of London, including the Natural History Museum, the Science Museum, the National Gallery, the Natural Portrait Gallery. Make sure to check out my video on the best free museums in London, which includes the Imperial War Museum and the London Museum. And my number one best thing to do when we get out of lockdown is to go meet up for a drink. Lord knows we will all need one daily, but it will be simply so nice to meet up with friends and family for the simple act of sharing a drink. Whether it's at one of London's hundreds of local pubs where people love standing out in the streets or Kensington Wine Rooms in Notting Hill if you like more wine than beer. Or we can meet up at one of my favorite spots, which is Gordon's Wine Bar, a historic 19th century cavern, pretty much in its original state, included the vaulted ceilings and candlelit rooms. So here's to whatever you're drinking. Let's have a drink with our favorite people. I really hope you like this video and keeping you in mind of so many of the fabulous things that you can partake in in and around London. On my YouTube channel, I share lots of fabulous things about living in London and the London property market. So I hope you definitely subscribe and keep in touch. 
If you want to learn more about London, make sure to download my free local London guide with great tips and information about living in London. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to check out my other videos about London property market and living in London on my YouTube channel. That's Ugo Renze with Onyx Property Consultants and Keller Williams. Bye for now.